All right, I'm going to do another little study here. Why are Christians so weak? I'll tell you, it's one of them things that just stinks. I mean, you'll you'll see there are times that people just totally wrong you, and and there are just horrible things, and you just want to fight. And you know, it's kind of like Peter, and he's pulling his sword out, and he and he hits the you know servant's ear off, and things, and you know, cuts it off, and the Lord says, "Put up your sword." You know, <laughs> it's not time to fight right now, Peter. And what's Peter do? He's off denying the Lord a little while later, cussing and swearing. He's angry. Why? Because he had to be weak. And he didn't like that. And by the way, that was before he was saved, too, by the way. So don't say, oh, see, he was a Christian and he was cussing and swearing. The Lord was okay with it. No, I don't think so. Um, Jesus had not on the cross yet. He was a lost man when he was doing that. But let's check about this thing. Why are Christians so weak? Ro or, uh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. I came across this the other day in, in devotions, morning Bible reading for our family, and, and I thought you know, the Lord kind of prompted me to do a study on this. And it's uh, something I've struggled with. It's not always easy having to take a week kind of being meek in things. Uh, stance. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. We're weak in Jesus Christ. I mean, when you think about the picture of Jesus Christ... He's there in the garden. They come. They take him. They carry him off to the trial. The people are mocking him. They're spitting on him. They're ripping his beard hair out. Slapping him in the face. Making fun of him. Bowing the knee before him. Hail, King of the Jews. Ha, ha, ha. He's just standing there taking it. And then they take him, whip him to within an inch of his life, scourge him. And then they nail him on a, on a cross. And he's naked up there hanging on a cross and people are laughing at him and mocking him. Who is that? Oh, just the God of the universe. God of heaven. God of earth. By him all things consist. He could have just, at any time, just went, die. And all the people for on the earth, anybody on earth, just dead. Just like that. A thought. He wouldn't even have to speak. He could think it. He was up there. Naked on the cross, people making fun of him, laughing at him. We have to be the same way a lot of times as Christians. Why is that? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You know, the Bible condemns men being effeminate. You're not supposed to be effeminate as a man, but... Uh, being weak is a different different story. You don't have to act like a sissy or anything as a Christian man, but uh, there's sometimes that uh, you want to fight and you can't because it's not the Lord's timing for it. First Corinthians chapter one verse twenty six: For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. That's the reason there. But it isn't it interesting that God doesn't say, I'm going to pick the most good-looking, highly educated, wealthiest people on the planet to be my saints. He doesn't do that. He picks those things which are, which are despised. The uh, unpopular people. The people that don't look. They're not the best looking people. They're not the wealthiest people. The Lord picks them. Picks them out. Society says, get out of here, you bum, you stupid little ugly. Just, uh, I hate you. Get out of here. Get out of here. Kicks them out. You know? You get the soccer team or whatever else in gym class and when went to public school and they're picking, you know, you for our team and hey, you for our team. And 
you get the little nerdy kid that's last. And you, okay, you get on our team, whatever else. We just won't use you. That's not the way the Lord does it. The Lord does it the exact opposite. The Lord does it and says, hey, uh, best looking class uh, president there and high school cheerleader and academia and, you know, and, and all this. What about you, little uh, pimpled, ugly, little sickly looking kid? I'll take you. You mean the Lord pick somebody that's weak? Yeah, that's what the Bible teaches. And if you're strong, you know, some mighty, some noble are called, certainly. If you're strong, the Lord's going to bring you down a few notches. You're going to be ready to just smash somebody's face and the Lord's going to say, hold back. Huh? Well, Lord, this is the way I take care of little jerks like that. No. You mean I got to let them attack me and, and tear my name down and, and do things like that? You got to, you, I have to, to take this? Lord says, yeah, I'm going to take care of it. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. But Lord, I could just clean this guy's clock real quick, you know. <laughs> and the Lord's going, no, let me do it. Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in meek weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You'll see that there's a real conspiracy <laughs> the longer you're saved. That conspiracy is between your soul and your flesh. And your flesh will start to rebel and do things. You'll be reading and just totally mess up a word or say some dumb thing or whatever else. And it just, you know, and you got to go back. I'm sorry about that. You know, let me, you know, this ministry, unless I really mess up bad, I usually don't edit anything out. I, I put a little fade in and a fade out at the, you know, fade in at the beginning, fade out at the end. And that's pretty much just what you're seeing is, you know, is what you're getting. I mean, it's just... I am what I am, you know. I'm not some highly educated, uh, what are, you know, I get these guys, what are your credentials, Denlinger? Um, well, according to you, not very much. But in demonstration of the Spirit and power, a lot. The Lord's done a lot through this ministry. Why? Well, uh, one of the big reasons is because I'm despised. I'm not the strongest. I'm not the, the bravest or the best, most educated or most intellectual or whatever else. And I give the Lord credit. I don't fall back on my education that I had with my PhD and my THD and my whatever, whatever. I don't fall back on that stuff because I don't have it. <laughs> uh, I don't say I have the largest Baptist church building in the entire state of Maine. I have the most people attending Sunday school. I have the most this. I have the most that. I was a, a resident scholar at such and such. No, no. Despised, rejected. Some dumb hillbilly out in the woods with a camera and a Bible and some notes he, he wrote on a little yellow piece of paper. Wrote it with a pen. <laughs> Not very high tech, huh? But God uses me. Hmm. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Give you another reason why the Lord's used me in ministry and why the Lord uses a lot of you that I know about. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. I'll stop there. Keep reading here as we continue. But you know, I've seen this thing. Uh, there will be times when you'll have something go wrong with your flesh and normally it's not a big deal. You know, you just get a cut or you get kind of sick. You get kind of a stomach virus or, you know, some kind of, you know, whatever. And normally you just, well, I'd get right over it and everything is fine and whatever. But it becomes a messenger of Satan to buffet you. 
It's a thorn in the flesh. And you can't get rid of that thing for if your life depended on it. And sometimes it feels like it does. And you struggle and you struggle and you struggle. And there's times that you're just not sleeping at night and you feel sick and you just, you know, you feel horrible. Your head's just splitting headache and you're just going, God, please help me. God, what do I do? I don't know what I'm going to do here. Am I going to die? I, I, you know, and, and you just, you go through some real rough times. I've been through more rough times than I care to even remember. Why? Let's see why. Verse 8, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Why are Christians weak? Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You know, there's nothing wrong. Let's get back to it here in just a minute. But there's nothing wrong with wanting to say the power of Christ. I want the power of Christ in my life. I want to be mightily used of the Lord. I want to see people get saved. I want to see the devil get upset about this ministry. I want to have spiritual power. There's nothing wrong with that. But you have to be willing to pay the price. The price is not going to be, oh, I just perfect health and my, my bills are always paid and just, oh man, everything's just wonderful. People love me. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, no, no. You're going to be weak. You're going to have times that you're going to get up. There's times I get up, I kid you not. <laughs> There's times I get up out of bed in the morning and I think, I don't think I even slept. I've had nightmares all night long and just, horrifying terrible stuff that's not i don't even think this stuff and i'm going okay I, I, i'm sorry lord that this stuff is in my head but i don't i've never even seen anything like this i don't even know where this stuff is coming from and you, and you, you know huh. and i've had that thing go on for a week or two at a time every single night just nightmares 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 and i'm praying and just every day lord i'm i, you know, I don't know what's going on what am i supposed to do and you get out of that and you go into some other thing some kind of headache or some kind of some weird th whatever sicknesses or illnesses or, or whatever and I, I'm doing pretty good I haven't had cancer or you know any kind of weird you know really bad thing like that but 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 man struggle struggle why well because I want the power of Christ in my life and if I want the power of Christ then I have to be weak you want the power of Christ in your life you're gonna have to let people kick you around You know, a bunch of Luciferians come in, destroyed my Patreon page. I mean, they could have said, hey, you know, hey, Patreon could have come along and said, you know what? Uh, yeah, you showed some guy's email address and John Clow, little loser. And, and, you know, yeah, don't do that, okay? We're asking you to remove. No, just bam. Whole channel's gone. Or whatever you call the Patreon page, I guess. Just boom. Sorry. Nope. No warning. No, you know, notification. Boom, gone. And I ripped back and forth with him a little bit. And I said, you couldn't have even told me or whatever else? Well, we consider this to be very serious. And, you know, uh -huh, sure. Other people can do it. Secular people can do it. But I can't. You know. And I'm trying to show the guy's a criminal. You know. <laughs> whatever. But people stealing in my information and going after me and whatever else. And I'm just going. Oh, and the Lord's saying. You want the power of Christ, don't you? Well, yeah, Lord. Okay, are you ready to be weak? Verse 10. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Again, I can't tell you how many times we have literally been at the point of just total financial, okay, I don't know how we're going to pay this bill. I don't know how we're going to this or I don't know how we're going to that. And just throw myself before the Lord and say, Lord, is this the time? Do you want me to go back to, to work in secular job or whatever else? And, and, you know, and I, I've, I've done that so many times. I have quit the ministry many times. <laughs> and just, um, okay, this is it. Okay, Lord, all right. It, what's it going to be? Is it going to be wood turning? Is it going to be logging? And I, and I actually get excited sometimes about going back to, you know, the secular job where, you know, 
people aren't, you know, threatening me all the time and hating my guts. I mean, <laughs> you know, I used to actually go to art galleries and actually have people come up to me and say, you do wonderful work, you do beautiful work, and could you make this and could you make that? And, you know, uh, but yeah, I, I gave that up because I'm lazy or something. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to be kicked around and have my name, you know, and my face plastered all over the Internet and people just stabbing me in the back and cutting up my videos and making me say things that I didn't say. That's a lot better way to make a living, you know. Yeah, sure. Um, but, you know, there's been times I've said, OK, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready to go back to the secular world. And um, uh, what is it that you want me to do? I want I still want your will for my life, Lord. I'm not going to make the dis dis decision on my own. I mean, there's so many ways that I can make money. I know this, Lord. I can, I can do this. I can build that. I can, I can work for this guy. I can, and I'm so excited. I'm going, okay. And the Lord says, oh, um, here's a testimony. And somebody writes me and they say, I was confused about salvation. And Brother Brian, I watched your video and I realized I'm not genuinely saved. And the Holy Spirit convicted me. I got saved. I'm born again. And I've been watching your stuff and I, the Lord's just been just so richly blessed me and, and just, oh, wow, and, you know, and I just kind of, oh, okay, well, <laughs> I guess I'm supposed to continue in the ministry, you know, Lord, yeah, oh, by the way, here, I'll take care of your needs, and he does. Our needs have been met for 10 years now. Always takes care of us, but how many times I've been brought to that point of just a breaking point and just, and the Lord says, just continue on a little bit more. Why? Because he wants me weak. He wants me weak so that he can give me his strength. I can't take any credit, in other words. Christian, how much strength do you want to have in your life? How much sanctification do you want? How much of your business do you want God getting into? Is there a line that you want to draw? So, oh, okay, Lord, you know, hey, I've given up a lot of stuff, but, you know, don't get into that stuff there, Lord. This, you know, this stuff over here, okay, we can talk about some of that, but these things over here, hey, that stuff's kind of sacred to me, Lord. I don't, don't tell me to give up this stuff. Or do you just say, all to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. Whatever. I surrender all. What is it, Lord? You say, oh, yeah, I, I guess I could do that. I can, I can give up my friends and I can give up my family and I can give up my job and I can give up my this and that and whatever. Can you give up your health for the Lord? Can you suffer from a headache? Can you have other illnesses and things that are just unexplainable and you just kind of, how did this even happen? I, I, I can't seem to get out of this thing and Whatever. You willing to give that stuff up? Good health? Hmm. That depends on how much strength you want. Romans chapter 8. One of my least favorite verses in the entire Bible. So I thought you loved the Bible. Well, I love the Bible, but I don't... Uh, there's a few verses in it that I don't like. I'm not going to change them. But I don't like what they say. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ugh. For thy sake we're killed all the day long? Um, well, that's if the Democrats get elected. If the Democrats get elected, persecution is going to come. But we got Trump in there, so we Christians have it good. In fact, you know, I think... Donald Trump is actually going to bring American industry back to the American people. I think because Hillary Clinton lost the election, I think we're going to see a return to the good old days here in America. Praise God. We don't have to worry about persecution. Really? 
You don't believe the Bible too much, do you? You see, the reason why Christians get so worldly is because they don't want the power of Jesus Christ in their life. If you want the power of Christ in your life, the Lord's going to put you into some real uncomfortable situations. And you're all of a sudden, sudden going to see people that you trusted and, you know, whatever, and they're going to turn on you. And your health's going to start to go. Hmm. And the longer you go as a Christian, the more weak you'll become. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon you. That's why. Uh, what's the future for this ministry? I have no idea. <laughs> I really have no idea. I still have my hopes. I still have my hopes. The Lord says, okay, you know, you're, you're done there. Go on back. You can work in the whatever field you want to work in and stuff and, and things. But is that going to be reality? I, I have no idea. I don't know. Um, could I end up in prison someday for what I preach? Yeah. Could I end up being tortured someday? Yeah. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. Weakness. You say, well, then what's the hope, Brian? What are we supposed to hold on to? Um, the blessed hope is what the Bible calls it. There's going to come a day when you're going to hear your name come up hither. It's over. You're going to be with the Lord. And if the power of Christ rested upon you and you were weak for His sake, you're going to receive a level of power that you can't even fathom. This corruptible shall put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. There could be some papist over here or whatever else and put, have his crosshairs on the back of my head and just blow my head right off with a gun. Somebody could come up and stab me to death. But you're not going to get me when I come back. When I come back down at the second coming, incorruptible, immortal, I'm coming back conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, my Savior. And when we come back to this earth, ain't going to be any weakness then. We come back and all the wicked people, that Catholic church, that's drunken with the blood of the saints and martyrs of Jesus Christ. That Catholic church isn't going to be strong anymore. She's not going to be a world power with all the intrigue and all the behind the scenes power structure. Nope. Wiped out. And Jesus Christ comes back and looks down at that 200 million man army, that field. Beast. False prophet. Who shall make war with the beast? Who shall overcome him? You know, Revelation 13, the Lord says, Hello, I'm here to do it. Beast, false prophet. Whew. Down in the lake of fire, screaming all the way. And the Lord turns back to that army and says, whatever he says, the Bible doesn't say, it's just a sharp two-edged sword comes out of his mouth. Whew. Dead. An army, largest army ever assembled in the history of man, Gone. Dead. Then we ride down through it. No more meekness. No more weakness. Ruling and reigning with Christ for a thousand years, if so be that we suffer with Him. If you're weak, you're suffering. If you're strong, you're not suffering. Better think about that. Get your priorities straight. You're going to get kicked around down here, brethren. You will be persecuted. You'll be in necessities. You'll be in distresses, hungerings, fastings, all that stuff. Why? So that someday you can be strong. So that someday you can give up your weakness and say, finally, justice is going to be done. We come back down with the Lord Jesus Christ and it's all fixed up. The names of the idols are cut off. All the false religions, whew, gone. 
all the remaining Jesuits or Illuminati or whoever, blah, blah, blah. Come on, time for judgment. Come with us to Jerusalem, to the judgment of the nations. We have a king, Jesus. He's going to judge you. Oh, stand back. I got an AR-15. I'll shoot you there, you know, immortal saint. Go ahead. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, now we're going to judgment. The Bible says they will fall on a sword and they won't be hurt. Why? They're immortal. That's us. Back in the book of Joel, chapter 2. I'm looking forward to that time. But before I get to that time, I have to live in a world right now where I'm going to be weak. And Christian, you're living in that time too. You're living in a time when you're going to have sickness, where you're going to have pain. You're going to have suffering. You're going to have persecution. People are going to kick you around. They're going to cast out your name as evil by good report, by evil report. I mean, you can get down through the Pauline epistles and just see it. That's the price you have to pay. Just the way it is. But what a reward. What a thing to look forward to. This right, right now, this earth is cursed. It's beautiful. Where we're at here, it's beautiful. Looks very nice. But there's a curse here. Millennial Kingdom, not anymore. It's going to be a wonderful place. And your position there depends on your position here. Strength in the millennium, weakness today. Power, weakness. Don't get discouraged, brethren. Um, you're going to see things that are done to you and said about you and whatever else that are not right. And uh, some of it you're just going to have to take. You're just going to be you're going to be hit on the face, and you're just going to have to say, "Okay, hit me again." You can't do anything about it right now. But paybacks are coming. Don't ever forget that. Okay. So that is going to be it. Thank you to all those out there that do support the ministry. I do keep us going and thank you for the uh, letters of encouragement and things that we get uh, that's always uh, mightily used by the Lord to help us to continue um, just always great so I guess that's going to be it thank you very much for watching